Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're talking about what stitches look like. Ugly stitches and Ugly. pretty stitches and funky stitches and mm-hmm. stitches that you don't know what happened. I think that maybe we should start off in a good place, right? The, you, the perfect stitch? You thre- Yeah, the perfect stitch. You thread your machine with your... Well, I used to say with your foot up. Yes. Until I was corrected by our tech years ago and he said Didi you've got everyone in the world with their their foot up off of the floor trying the to tank. thread their so you thread machine. with your presser foot up <laughs> yes, right you okay thread with your presser foot up thread with your presser foot up you've threaded your every ma- machine i don't care what anybody <laughs> has told you say if it has a presser if, foot lever it needs to be raised yes if there's any controversy <laughs> about this that you don't have to do it that's fine, but I'm telling you, raise that presser foot. If it has a presser foot lever, raise it. Okay. It opens the tension okay. disc. Okay, okay. You've threaded with your presser foot up, right? right? You have threaded your bobbin correctly. And you have followed, put it, yes. You've followed all of the instructions in your machine. You've used high-quality thread. And if, if you have doubt, there's this thing that comes with your machine, and it's called owner's manual. Yes. So you've done all of those steps, and you get out. Let's pretend. What do we? What do we get out? Like a, like a buttery, um, Irish linen buttery or something, yeah, or like that a Mallory nice, would take for her science yeah. project. Yeah. Okay, so like some beautifully uh, stable woven fabric. Lawn. How about you, woven okay. lawn? You have yeah. a sharp new needle in your machine, mm-hmm. and you stitch out. The most beautiful straight stitch. On two layers of on fabric. On two layers Your of fabric. Your machine is meant to sew on two layers of fabric. And then you are like, well, I'd really like to see the zigzag. And so you finish your stitch. You raise your needle up, either by using your thread cutter or by using a button or by using or your, your hand wheel or your whatever or your or your foot control. Some people have that on but their foot control. But you raise it to the highest point. You raise point. it to the highest position. You, you free your thread. You That's right. You pull, you pull your fabric out, and, and then it pulls you, out nicely and easily. Yes, and then you put it back, and you I, I want to see the zigzag stitch. So you punch or twist to or point to or whatever put in the cam that makes the zigzag stitch. And it stitches out in a row of beautiful sideways Vs that are just like, Beautiful triangle, beautiful triangle, beautiful points. Points east, points west. Points, points east, points west. With gorgeous, they're not 45 degree. Well, they're like, they're like. No, they're right angles. Are they, well. Aren't they? I don't or know. Are they up to, are they. Uh, like maybe 70 they, degree I don't know what they now. are. I don't know. What? Okay, whatever they are. Well, it depends. It depends uh, on sure, your stitch. Sure. Okay, it depends on your length. And, but they're all I, the yes, same. Yes, yes. The bottom thread is They're on the bottom. They're mirror image of each other. The bottom thread's on the bottom. That's the top right. thread's on the top. Oh, my gosh. How beautiful. You can sew perfectly yes. on your machine. And then your kid comes in and is like, Mom, can you, can you like, shorten the strap on my backpack? Or can you, like, um, sew me a leotard? Or uh, can, can you, you alter my wetsuit? Can, yeah, can you, I, my bike shorts ripped. Can you do And you're like, all right, okay, great. I'd be happy to sew on your spongy, stretchy, weirdo fabric. Dirty, probably. Dirty fabric. All right, I've got my With sewing. With my nice, pristine Needle, sewing new, machine, needle, new needle, new thread. Okay, and like, uh, let's pretend like you're on some knit. Two layers of knit, right? Okay. And then you get this kind of like, just not so perfect looking zigzag stitch. What is going on? Sort of like a dorsal fin on a shark. Okay, I'd never heard that term before. <laughs> I have. I know, I, I, yeah. I figured you had, but I was like, that is totally right. It looks like a shark fin. Yeah, they do. She said it's shark fin, you know. Yes. Um, More so maybe on the bobbin than on the top, right? Well, on the the bobbin doesn't look as pretty as even the shark fin on the top. Oh it's even goodness. uglier. It's even shark finnier. It is, but it is holding. Yeah, it's, it is functioning. It's functioning. The thread's not like pulling out immediately. No, no. When you stretch the altered sweaty bike shorts, the seam right. stays in place. But but if I took this into ZD's sewing studio, 
Would they reprimand me? Yeah, would they say, oh, no, oh, no, that doesn't look as oh, beautiful. Oh, no, that's ugly sewing. My, 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 <laughs> my grandmother would, would scoff at this at this ugly shark f- fin tail whatever stitch. Um, I can't put this in the state fair. I um, my, my home ec teacher would have hit my knuckles with a ruler. I'm so glad Mary Malari isn't here. <laughs> okay. What happened? happened? You really screwed up. No, no. no. <laughs> okay, guys. It's not what happened. Your stitches are never going to look quite as nice on a knit. Right. Or on, a, I just picture like bumpy backpack well, webbing. Well, too, well I, right. Or, or, yeah, that, that you know, mm-hmm. certainly like webbing, like any sort of seatbelt webbing. Or the other thing is, is you can get a woven fabric that is not, what should I say? It's homogeneous? Loosely, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's bumpy weaved or whatever. Or, or even or, like twillish. Twi- well, you know, exactly. Twi- it twi- might yeah. not look perfect. So if you're wondering about that stitch, go back to that pristine piece, two pieces of fabric you had, and see if you're, do not, do not, do not, do not touch your bobbin tension. Please. Don't okay? touch your top tension either. No, but especially not the bobbin you, you, tension. Yeah, you're right. At least the top tension, you know what number to go back yeah, to. Yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. The, the, the bottom tension, uh, you know, your bobbin tension is an art, let me tell you, yeah, to yeah, figure don't, out. Don't mess with that. Don't mess right with away. that until somebody <laughs> really, really instructs you on that. But your stitch might really be okay. Right. Your fabric will make a difference in what that stitch looks like. And I will tell you another thing. There's some stitches that you're never going to get or you're never going to look exactly like a ready-to-wear stitch because maybe that stitch is, say, I'm thinking of like swimwear. So yeah. it's on a knit, mm-hmm. and they sometimes use like rubber mm-hmm. instead of elastic because it's a piece of rubber right. that they sew on. They they double fold the fabric in and then their tops it looks like a it looks like a you know t- a, um cover stitch. Cover stitch that they're using. And it pro- it is a cover stitch animal of sorts. But it was made by a machine that probably cost several hundred thousand dollars and it only does that. And it's not and that's sold. that's the only thing it does. <laughs> and it's not sold in, in, in your sewing store, and <laughs> you will right. never own it. So but, you're going to have to make up some sort of so, mock stitch or whatever, and so it might not stitches, look that perfect. Your stitches won't look quite, you know, quite the same. They might not look as pretty as they do in other fabrics. Right. But before you go changing the tension, let's learn a lesson before we take a message break that the look of the stitch is not always the final say and whether that stitch is proper. Right. Right? Absolutely. Sometimes the stitch looks a little weird on the knit, but it stays in place. It allows the fabric to stretch as it needs to, Um, but it won't always look quite as beautiful, right? Right. Let's call it pristine. It might be pretty. It's just not pristinely like you expect it to be. And so before we talk to you about why stitches look different on knit fabrics, probably in particular or regular fabrics, let's take a quick message break. So, Mom, have you ordered your Sew Here box yet? Oh, well, how do I order it? I don't know how. <laughs> well, you can come to the store, okay? Oh. You can well, that come, would be easy for you me. Can, you can come to your own sewing store, and you can order like, this. Do I have to, like, pack my own box and send it to myself? Yeah, I think I'm going to make you pack a lot of boxes, actually. <laughs> oh, I see. And we'll be doing that um, very So now soon. I'm a fulfillment center personality. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Um, you can either come into the store or come to ZD Sewing Studio or you can go to sewhere.com slash box and order your box, but only through December 7th. Oh, well, that's right away. That's right. Gotta and if hurry you, up. If you're interested to know what the heck is in the Sew Here box, go back and listen to our uh, bony Okay, bony I think this episode. would be a great holiday present for anybody. That's why we like, did it. Would the, this would be like a great Hanukkah thing, and you could split it up and, like, put, you know, the eight days across the well, eight days. Well, that's for sure. Okay, well, go back and listen to that mini episode to see uh, to hear about everything that's in it, and you can go to sewhere.com slash box to see the box, see what's in it, and purchase one for yourself or someone else. Sew, 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 sewing out loud. 
And we're back. All right. So uh, why do stitches look different on knits than on wovens, Mom? Well, it has to do with a couple of different things. It has to do mainly with the stitch formation is what it has to do with. But there's several things that can change the stitch formation. So let, we're, we're just talking about your regular sewing machine right now, which is a lock stitch, right? Uh-huh. So what happens is... You know how you've just threaded your machine and it goes down and it go, you know you've got all these little guides and it's going through a tension disc and it goes down into your needle and that needle has a groove in the front of it and your thread should lay in that groove. And then there's also a scarf, what they call a scarf in the back of that needle that you know makes it get down nice and skinny so it can pierce that fabric easily. And what happens is Okay, and you've got a bobbin too, right? Yep. You've got two threads. So you have to have two threads to get a lock stitch. And what happens is when that needle goes down, it carries that thread, and it's carrying it in that groove just the way it's supposed to. And it goes through the fabric, and it goes down into the bobbin area, and the bobbin thread, how should I explain this, slips through, loops well, through... As the needle goes back up, right? It before even the eye of the needle comes back up, okay? Like the needle has just begun its ascent. A loop is created behind the needle. Correct. And then the bobbin thread g- gets happy and jumps through. <laughs> right, it like jumps through the hoop. It's a little bit of quantum physics. No, I. It, so the bobbin thread is thrown through. It is. There you it's, go. It's, That's a good way to describe it. Is it is thrown through the loop by your hook system. Okay. Right. So that's how it locks in place. And so that, that loop back there on the bottom, hey, get this. You don't make a loop really on the top of your fabric as right. you sew, but you do have to make that loop on the bottom. That's right. And if you really, really look at your stitch, it doesn't look the same on the top as on the bottom. And it's okay. And people will say, I get this a lot from quilters, oh, look, the bottom of my stitch doesn't look like the top of my stitch. It's not supposed to. It never has. And it never. Didn't, it didn't I'm never, sorry, it didn't look like that on your grandma's nope, machine it didn't, either. It did I'm not, sorry. In fact, it, it probably wasn't as nice as yours. No, exactly. And people are like, oh, she had a perfectly straight stitch. No, no. No, that's it, just a nice memory you on, have. Yeah, <laughs> on the back of the fabric that your grandmother right. sewed together, the stitch was ever so slightly wavier. Now, you know what your grandma wasn't sewing on? Neoprene. Well, you that's true. You know what true. your grandma wasn't sewing on? rayon lycra right. you know polyester strapping with yeah. nylon in it that melts there, when you didn't even have seat belts when <laughs> when right. my grandma was alive it, i right? mean it's amazing <laughs> that grandma's lived <laughs> so anyway it's grandma's alive they they were she didn't use seat belts. they weren't sewing on they weren't sewing on stuff like that you know uh, in fact, maybe they were sewing on wool that'll give you like a oh, real yeah. nice stitch. It'll give you a real right? ugly stitch because it gets all buried. Uh, yeah, well, right. you can't tell. That's right. You don't. You can't <laughs> you find can't it. Sell. So anyway, what happens is the stitch needs to form, and it goes perfectly through many, many fabrics. And you've used the right needle, so you know hopefully it'll go through perfectly because you've used the right needle. Right. But if there's a little bit too much drag. Oh, I, I keep thinking of neoprene because I'm getting ready to work on some neoprene. It's it's like a nightmare. Um, it will drag. It is it is rubbery. It has a friction to it, and it may not let that loop form in exactly the right shape or the right length. What really has happened is the timing is off. Yep. So when you, you take your machine in and somebody says, that, oh, you say, oh, my, I'm not forming a stitch. And the tech or the tech or whoever takes your machine and says, oh, I think the timing's off. That is what happens. The timing can get off. And the loop is not there for the bobbin thread to jump through. Right. And I mean, you know, when you're sewing on neoprene, like I just think about people are stitching up those cup cozies a lot. It, it doesn't mean that you can't sew on it, but it also, it, it means that you're going to sew on it. It won't look quite as gorgeous as on our two layers of lawn, but it's going to work. Right. The other thing is, and you're talking to speed sewer here. Yep. Sometimes you got to slow it down. Slow down. I like to sew really fast. Mm-hmm. I've been known to sew so fast that I've sent my spool of thread like, you know, 
flying off of the 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 spool pen right. and across the room I sew so fast right and I used to buy him a sewing machine by how fast it went because that's what I liked the speed and I can get any place faster than my husband can when we drive someplace so, <laughs> so don't be alarmed right. um, now I'm not saying that like you might go sew on a knit and like your machine's messed up otherwise. Right. Okay. Like well, I've happen. heard people say yeah. the machine eats my knit. And I yeah. don't quite know what that means, but that shouldn't be happening either. I know <laughs> what they mean. I mean, I know right. what's happening. Uh, they're not, well, I don't even yeah. know if I should get into that. But yeah, there are other issues. But let's right. talk about just the look of the stitch. And really what prompted this was somebody in the self sewn wardrobe group. She posted a picture of all these tests she had right. done on the fabric. She's working so hard. And a lot of people had suggestions. Um, and But Mom and I were both like, it's fine. Right. You know, and we, I, I'm not... We have high standards. Right. We're not, we're no slouches, you know. Well, and my standards are higher than yours. Yeah. So, um, you know, but. I mean, I hem things. I know. <laughs> I'm wearing, hey, hey, did, uh, did you make your jeans? Oh, oh, no. No, you didn't. No. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, um, so. <laughs> uh, uh, I have on yoga pants. <laughs> okay. So, and my jeans are hemmed. Um, so, yeah, I feel like. People sometimes they don't they don't right. know how those those right. fabrics and those stitches work right. together. But what I told her was do that test and then stretch your fabric right. where the seam would be, like right. what, whatever you're making. Right. And if that and holds the other up, thing is, I I saw you on on um, one of your your videos videos and you stretch you only stretch the seam in one way stretch yeah. it in both directions i mean i I'm, i know you were just illustrating well and that fabric only stretched one direction right it, it only right. had the right. one the the, right. the one direction otherwise sure. i would have actually i wished i would have used a, <laughs> a stretchier a fabric that stretched both ways um but, but yeah it really, needs to hold up to what it's meant to do right and i i really you know the very first thing i would do in that case if i'm getting an ugly stitch and i've i've threaded correctly and i've sewn on you know a woven and it's and then i go back and it's ugly the next thing i would do is i would start changing needles and a lot of the information that people were given was oh change your change your bob intention no. don't that's the very last thing you want to do mm -hmm. i'm telling you it's not usually your bob intention unless it's really wildly off but um it's probably not your tension if you're missing a stitch or dropping a stitch it's not your tension it has to do with timing which is not something that you can probably fix no i know there are videos out there on like how to time your machine right. and stuff and i mean you know, do right. so at now your own risk. Now, another thing you can do, which I don't think is always worth it, okay, is if you're stitching on something like this and you're you're doing a zigzag and you're getting your shark's tooth or uh, shape or whatever, and you want it to look prettier, you can always use a stabilizer. And it may help because what it does is it holds that, all that fabric up, you know, sort of above the feed dog. Right. And it may help. The only thing is, is then you got to tear it all yeah, you out. You got to take it out because you. Yeah, it's you, not worth it to me. Because you want it to stretch. And what right, does right, it right, stretch? Right. Your stabilizer. Right. And, and you, you know, you can't use, usually water solubles won't be strong enough. To, to, make to make a difference. A difference. I, um, I I've to... even used paper in, in the old days. And actually, if you use paper, you want to use not tissue paper. Right. Listen to me, everybody. Not tissue paper and not newsprint because it causes too much dust. Okay. Use like typing paper or notebook paper is sort of what you want. I used to like... Um, what adding machine paper because it was long. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. could just roll yeah, it long out. And straight. Yeah. Or long does and that thin. even exist in well, I guess it does in cash registers or things. But um really, it, like I said, it if it's it has to do with the timing. And the timing might not be that your machine's off. It might be that that fabric's not allowing your machine to do the proper timing. Right. And you you might be A okay. So if you've ever I knitted a pillow once not gonna do it again um but I knitted the front and I knitted the back and they be they were square pieces and then I had to like sew it together by hand yeah yeah so I mean I guess I didn't have to right um but when I was doing that by hand mm -hmm. I was like oh well yeah there's like 
you know, I can't really do like a perfectly straight line right. here between these two. And now that's a huge magnified, you know, version of right. knitted fabric. But, you know, so if you've ever knitted, I think that can really inform your sewing. Um, so don't don't be too hard on like the look of the stitch. Right. Check the function, right? I actually have sewn a harness that Mallory had to fly in um, on stage because the uh, director bought a window washing harness instead of a flying harness and he bought a small man's which did not fit my small daughter and i went through what three layers yep of that stuff and you know i put my kid you know 30 feet above the stage and i not every stitch was perfect but it was strong. And you use nice Mettler metrazine thread. I thrift. use metrazine thread how, is exactly I, what I use. That's used. how I sell metrazine thread every day. I say, and they're yep. like, well, somebody will come in, well, is it strong? And I'll be like, well, you I could, You could I be Fuma Sarah. Fuma Sarah <laughs> and Fiddler on the Roof, and I had to fly, and the director wouldn't buy a real fly harness, so I had a window washer harness, and my mom altered it. And anyway, okay. So, <laughs> anyway. You sounded like Fuma right then. I, my pearls, <laughs> pearls. Okay, uh, I think I think that just about does it for um, stitches looking funky. I mean, yeah, of so course, ju- we just could, don't panic. Yeah, I don't guess panic. Is the thing. Don't panic. It might be fine. Um, of course, there's tons of different combinations of fabrics and threads and whatnot. But uh, check the function before you worry about taking it to the state fair. And thank you so much for listening. We're on Instagram as at ZD Sewing Studio, and you can contact us by emailing me at Mallory at SewHere.com. So you can sew wiggly and still sew happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.